Hello Commanders, Commander Plater here back with another really dangerous video, and today I'm giving you my first impressions and flight system landing of the second of the new ships being added to Elite Dangerous Beyond 3.3, the Crate Phantom. I want to get a few things out of the way first, as this is still in beta, some stats or modules could change, although that said, the Phantom seems to be pretty well balanced at this point. Let's begin with a visual tour of the Crate Phantom. The Crate Phantom is not just a reskin of the Crate, but you can tell it's based on the same model. It has a very similar profile with a few key differences. The cockpit is quite different due to the Phantom only having one additional multi-crew seat, not two. This means that the smaller side cockpits of the crate are gone, the same great visibility remains as does the view of the medium hardpoints from the cockpit. The overall hull shape of the Phantom is very similar, but it does have one less hardpoint and less aggressive looking engines. This leaves the Phantom looking a bit sleeker, and the hull panels on the Phantom are also less visible, which makes the Phantom look a bit more polished. I have briefly mentioned the engines already, and let's take a little bit of a closer look. The Phantom looks much less aggressive and more refined with a single row of smaller jets. There may have been one or two comparisons to the Millennium Falcon, but I can't possibly see why that would have happened. The same undercarriage wings remain, and there's still an off-centre entrance at the back. It's time to take a look at the internals and see what the Phantom is packing. As usual, we're going to start by taking a look at the hardpoints. It's equipped with two large and two medium, which gives it some good damage output. The two larges are on the top of the hull, and the mediums are located up front next to the cockpit. So yes, you do get the joy of seeing your guns pew pew. Suggestions for a loadout? The good news is, is that the Phantom handles well enough that fixed weapons requiring leading the target are more than viable. Cannons, plasma, both are going to serve you well. Moving on to the utility mounts, and the Phantom, like every other medium ship with the exception of the Mamba and the FDL, is equipped with four. I'm just going to throw this out there, that every time we get a medium ship, it has four. You know what? Five is a nice number too. The Phantom is never going to be a shield tank, and the crate wasn't, so why should it? But with four utility mounts, you do have a couple of different options, whether you want chaff or a point defence, as well as some shields. This of course means you will need to build your ships around a purpose. There's going to be no one size fits all here. Right, core internals. A size 7 power plant, which for the size of the ship is a pretty decent size. Both the Mamba and the FDL have a size 6 remember. So power is not going to be an issue and with the builds I've toyed with, I've not encountered any power issues and that includes using Guardian Shield boosters. Size 6 thrusters, which means the Phantom is going to have some really nice handling involved, almost to the point where it feels a little bit like flight assist off. A size 5 FSD means the Phantom will be engineered for some really healthy jump range. Exploration builds are looking to make the Phantom a really good upgrade from the Asp Explorer, something that was missing as a good medium sized exploration ship. A size 4 life support, a size 7 power distributor, which, once engineered, will give some really good recharge and capacity for both firepower and boosting. Sensors are size 6 too. A quick note here is that the internals of the Phantom are large for its price point, so it may cost you a little bit more to outfit than more expensive stock ships. And finally, onto optional internals. The Phantom has one size 6, three size 5s, three size 3s, and one size 2. With the removal of the need to equip discovery scanners, it's effectively buffed all ships and freed up a slot. The outfitting options for the Phantom are great, and for combat you're looking at a decent hull strength and module reinforcements. It has capacity for mining loadouts, passengers, or, as previously mentioned, exploration, which personally I feel where the Phantom is going to really exceed. One key difference here is that the Phantom cannot equip a fighter like its older brother, the Crate Mark II. So it's time to get on with the flight assist off landing for the Crate Phantom, and a small reminder of the rules I tend to follow when I do this. I start 5km out, we make sure that we turn off the shields for the ship as well, we also turn off flight assist and rotation correction. The reason why we do this is shield generators obviously make things a little bit easier, because you don't have to worry about bouncing around inside the station. Also, where we turn off rotation correction, that is due to mainly because people suggest that I should. It doesn't actually make a difference with rotation correction off uh, when you are just simply flying with flight assist off. It does not make any difference whatsoever. Um, this is something that essentially flight assist off does supersede it, so that's something to bear in mind. But it is off just so no one can challenge me and say that I have not done it. So we will request our 
our docking and for a change we're doing this at Plater's Tyranny which is the station that's being put into the game which is yes named after me which is pretty epic same time it also has my voice as part of the traffic controllers which is quite a nice little thing I would say I guess it's time to start moving us forward Okay, flight assist is off. Now, with the Crate Phantom, in my experience using it in combat, it handled really, really well. Like, it near felt like flight assist off, or whilst flight assist was on. So we'll have to see how this goes. I'm going to hopefully not make too much of a mistake. Uh, with the Mamba, I tried to enter far too quickly. And we're trying to avoid doing that this time as well. There we go. Oh, 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 no, that's not great. That is not what we want to happen. I think I, I well, I know what happened there. I overcorrected. I need to get the speed off quick. Okay. About 50 meters per second is pretty good for, for docking. There we go. This is right. Lander gear is already deployed. Okay, oh no! Oh, oh, this is bad. This is not good. This is, this is, this is stuck on station geometry. This is, oh no. Okay. Have we corrected? I have n oh dear, what happened there? Oh, I'm, call I'm calling, I'm calling a, a do-over on that, I think. Well, maybe. Is it cheating if I do? I'll give it a go. That'll behave. That was well on target, that was. There we go. So this is not going very well at all. Um, issues being... I know, a lot of floating around, I would say. It's definitely on my part. And bouncing. Which isn't great. It's quite a light ship, so it does make sense. Oh, 32% hull. Getting stuck on station geometry, clipping the slot on the way in. That's not something I call going according to plan. So I am calling do over on that. Just because I got stuck on some station geometry, which to me means it's an invalid attempt. No doubt you guys are going to slaughter me in the comments. Doesn't matter. We're going again. Flight assist is already off. Rotation correction is off. Shields are off. We're going to get straight into it and we're going to uh, try and get this right this time. And you know what? It's the same lamppost that got me with a Mamba as well. Or at least the same position. And actually I think we're coming in on the same pad, pad 33. Okay, you want to start bleeding the speed off now. You need to move over a touch. A bit more speed off. That ship about to come out it needs to stay exactly where it is okay that's a lot smoother okay let's take the speed off uh, I think the problem was is I was coming in a little bit too low before that would be the issue and actually one of the announcements you can hear in Plato's Tyranny is me telling people please refrain from practicing <laughs> flight assist off docking oh the irony Think. I think we're reasonably good here. And again, one of the main reasons we don't do this with shields is because you can't just throw the ship around. You have to show a spot of restraint. That's pretty good. About 4% just from uh, touching down. Honestly, I'm glad we've not got any more ships for me to do this with because this, this, this wrecks my nerves every single bleeding time I do it. In fact, I don't even know why I started doing this. Oh well, it's over now. And there you go, Commanders. That was my first impressions of the Crate Phantom with Flight Assist off landing. Despite having two takes of it, I still think I could have done better. But hey, there you go. I'm going to ask you guys for your comments in the comment section, opinions, thoughts on the Crate Phantom. Are you going to be buying one? And if so, what are you going to be using it for?
So, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you do like, subscribe, and whilst you're there, please turn on notifications so you get an alert every time I put a new video out. Also, if you are looking to support the channel, please check out the links in the video description as there are a couple of different ways to do so. But once again, thank you for watching. Commander Plater, out.